boys and girls, as we know, 2022 was a really special year. And we're going to be finding out today all about a lady who celebrated something 50 years previously. And she's uh, got a great connection with the school. She's in and out all the times, sometimes known as our golden girl. Can anybody suggest me, who do you think I'm talking about? Charlie, who do you think I'm talking about? Lady Mary Peters. Well done. And does anybody know anything about Lady... Yes, Charlie again? Oh, and I made a film with Lady Mary Peters for the school. You did indeed, all about gymnastics. And is there anything else we know about? Yes, go on ahead there, Joel, please. And don't forget, she signed our wall in 2015. She was in here and she signed our wall. Lady Mary has visited our school many times over the years. She's even taught the nursery. So we'll be going down to the Linen Museum and we'll find out all the information about Lady Mary. Who's looking forward to going down to the Linen Museum? Oh yes, I'm sure you are. But before we do that, does anybody have any ideas as to uh, any other things that happened in the year 2022? Chloe. Queen Elizabeth celebrated her Platinum Jubilee. That's 70 years as Queen. You're right, yes, she did indeed, she did indeed. And is there, yes, go on ahead there, please. She sadly passed away on September 2022, age 96. She reigned for so long, it was, it was well done remembering that. Now, is there any, Fabco. That meant we got a new king, King Charles III. Tremendous, yes, we did, we got a new king indeed. Now, other things that happened in 20, your hand up, yes, Connie? The Titanic sank over 110 years ago in 1912. You're right, it did indeed. She was all right when she left Belfast. The Titanic film was released 25 years ago in 1997. Look, Jack, I'm flying. Reese, yes, anything else? We celebrated 40 years of integration. We did, so yes, I'm going ahead, Abigail. Yeah. Yes, that's right. And to celebrate it, we made the number 40 out of loads of different items. Our choir was invited to perform at a special 40 years of integrated education celebration in, in the Island Centre by the Lisburn and Castlereagh Mayor. The person who encouraged integration in Northern Ireland, Baroness May Blood, sadly passed away in 2022. Baroness Blood worked hard during the Troubles to help bring peace to Northern Ireland. Yes, and she also visited our school in 2015 to open the new entrance hall. Frank Carson, a famous Northern Irish comedian, died 10 years ago in 2012. Frank believed strongly in integrated education and he co-founded the Carson Awards with his son Tony in 2008. Tony continues to promote integrated education through the awards. It's the way he told them. Good, lots of things about integrated education. Now, was there anything else that you can remember? Uh, go, go on ahead there about 2022. The BBC hit 100 years old last year. It started all the way back in 1922. For 100 years, the British Broadcasting Corporation has broadcast news, music and sport on radio and TV and has brought many of our favourite TV programmes. My favourite is still CBBS. Hi everyone at Fort Hill Integrated Primary, it's JC here from CBBS, and I'm actually really proud to say that I actually went to Fort Hill Integrated College and now I'm a presenter for the BBC. Bye! 100 years ago, in 1922, Hard Carter discovered the mummy of Tutankhamun. I want my mummy. Here I am. Ah. 199 years ago, in 1822, William Barber was preparing to open the Barber Mill in Hilden. Opening in 1823, the mill employed 2,000 people. Um, and maybe, maybe we'll take one more thing about 2022 before we get ready to go. Oh, Brody. The Premier League turned 30 years old in 2022. It did, well remembered indeed. Now, what we're going to do is going to walk down to the Linen Museum and we're going to find out as much information as we can about Lady Mary Peters. So, is everybody ready to go? Yes! Right, let's go.
This is Lady Mary Peters in 1972 wearing her Olympic tracksuit and it still fits her. Look, this is the Olympic vest that Lady Mary Peters wore in the Olympics in 1972. Her number was 111. We really enjoyed visiting the Lady Mary Peters exhibition at the Linen Museum. So, we decided to invite her into our school to find out more about our very own Golden Girl. Well, good morning, P7s. And I know all of you have been doing a lot of research on our one of our very special local heroes, Lady Mary Peters. And I know she has been a friend of Fort Hill Integrated Primary School over many years, and she's visited us a number of times. So we know, Mary P, that you have traveled the globe, the planet, to many different countries across the world, has, ha, have met many different peoples in all walks of life, and therefore you hold values that we hold very dear to us in Fort Hill Integrated Primary. And we know you are a supporter of integrated education, which is very special. I'm gonna hand it over to the class. Thank you very much indeed, lovely to have you. Thank you very much. As a child, what were your dreams and aspirations? I didn't have any. I was just a little girl growing up in Liverpool and enjoying my life because we'd had World War II and we had had bombs in our road, so there were houses with all broken windows. We had lino on our windows for many years because all the windows had been broken. So just playing in the fields and going to school was very important in our lives. And my brother was older than me, so when he ran ahead, I kept saying, oh, wait for me. And he's never been better than me since then. <laughs> but it was a happy childhood. We had good food and we had, uh, I had all my cousins and grandparents there. And then when I got to your age, I was, sitting on the stairs one night and I heard my dad telling my mum that we were going to come and live in Ireland. That seemed like a world away. And I was very scared because I wouldn't know anybody and I was going to have to go to a new school as many as you of you have had to do. So it was a big change in my life, but I loved it. But that's when I had a dream to be an athlete because there was a little piece of land beside our house where the workman who had built the houses had his hut. And I made a long jump pit in that place. I'd never seen television in those days. Didn't know what it was about, really. I'd done it a little bit at primary school in England. And so I have no idea why I did that. At what age did you know you were gonna dedicate your life to sport? Well, when I was 16 and moved by then to Portadown College, uh, the headmaster saw me playing cricket very badly one day and he said, you're wasting your time here. And he took me to where there was a former pupil coaching the boys and I joined in and the coach recognised that I had some talent that he could see and uh, started coaching me. So it was never dedicated, it was always a hobby. I just enjoyed going out after school and, and training. And um, because I became better and better at each of the events I was trying, he introduced me to a pentathlon, which is the hurdles, the high jump, the long jump, the shot put, and the 200 meters. And I'd never done the hurdles or the shot put before, so I had to learn those two new skills. And they became my strongest events. Who inspired you to become an athlete? Probably my parents and my brother were my first inspiration, but also this athletic coach. And then because in school, uh, we used to have an assembly every morning and the headmaster used to say, well, Mary Peters was competing in Belfast at the weekend and she was second in the 100 yards and she was third in the high jump. And I felt very proud to have my name mentioned. So that was an encouragement to me. 
What do you think would be the best way to celebrate all the sporting history of Northern Ireland? Oh, you know what I would like, don't you? You've been down to the museum in Lisburn. My ultimate aim before I pass away is that we will have a sports museum to celebrate all the people in Northern Ireland who have succeeded in sport, to inspire the new generation of young people to get involved. And I have a lady at the moment who's reviving that dream in my heart because she's trying to find some funding to be able to make that a reality. And that would be the best. We've had so many champions in boxing and rugby and soccer and swimming and all sports. And it would be a shame not to remember all that. And when somebody dies, their memorabilia goes to the family. Wouldn't it be so much nicer to have it on display for other people to enjoy? Munich, 1972, minutes before your final event, the 200 meter. What were your thoughts? I was terrified <laughs> because my coach had told me that I had to run faster than I'd ever run before and I was 33 by then which is quite mature and um, I knew that the girl that was closest in points in the pentathlon was a very fast runner because she was in the German relay team. Her name was Heidi Rosendahl and she ran out of her skin I came fourth in the race, but it didn't matter where you finished, it was the time you did. And I beat her by a tenth of a second, like a centimetre, after five events over two days. And I was at a reception with her when she was visiting, when I celebrated my 50th anniversary. And the journalist said to her, have you ever forgiven Mary for beating you? And she went, no. <laughs> Charlie has a copy of my medal to show people, but this was the first Summer Olympic gold medal. And we were going through the troubles at that time where people were being killed and buildings being bombed. So it was very nice to have the opportunity to show off an Olympic gold medal. And I brought it on the back of a lorry down Royal Avenue to the Lord Mayor uh, who was Alderman Christie, and I said, I went for gold, I won gold, and I brought it home for you. And I've been sharing it ever since, for 50 years. <laughs> what was your favorite event in the pantathlon? I liked the hurdles because it was the first event, and also because if you're running on the track, people watch. If you're way down at the other end of the field putting the shot, or at that end doing the high jump, People don't watch, they like to watch what's going on in the track, so it's attracted attention and made me run harder because I knew that people were watching. How many pentathlons have you taken part in? I have a world record for having done 42. They don't do them anymore because they now do the heptathlon, which is two more events, so that record will stand probably forever. And I also hold the world record for the pentathlon because after I won mine, they changed the event. Who is the most famous person you've ever met? Oh my goodness. Um, well, obviously Her Majesty the Queen and now the King. One of the people that impressed me most in the whole world is Nelson Mandela, and he touched my heart. And as a result of meeting him in London on an occasion, I went and worked in the townships in South Africa. How long did it take to build a Mary Peters track, and how was it funded? Oh, a very good question. It took me three years. The night I won my gold medal, a man called Malcolm Brodie, who was a journalist in the Belfast Telegraph, rang me up and he said, we'd love to commemorate your success. What would you like? And I said, a track, because the one that I had trained on was full of potholes. Hadn't got a decent track in Northern Ireland. And so they f set up this fund to raise money for the track. And uh, when I came home, I came home on a Friday. I was celebrating all day that day and over the weekend and was back at work on Monday morning. 
uh, but people started telling me they would like me to attend an event so that I could go and raise, they could give me some money. So I went to schools and youth clubs and rotary clubs and women's institutes, stood at factory gates, and after three years I was able to raise enough money to build the track. In 2013, we hosted the World Police and Fire Games, so that was the people from all over the world who wanted to compete for either the police service, the prison service, or the fire service, to come to Northern Ireland and to try and win medals for their organizations. And we needed a bigger track because the one we had built had only six lanes, and for international competition, you need eight. So Belfast City Council put three million into the track. On the day that we opened, officially opened the track, I asked that the children that had contributed would spell my name with their bodies around the track. And they put Mary P and I keep meeting adults saying, I was in the letter P or I was in the letter T. <laughs> so it was to make them realize that they owned part of the track. It helps them to go and train for whatever sport they want to do. The rugby players and the boxers all go down there as well as the athletes. And it brings them together to see how good they are. And you know, being in athletics is great fun. You make great friends. You've heard I've traveled the world and it didn't cost me. It didn't cost me any money to go all those places because they give you a uniform to wear. Like, better than this now, <laughs> but this I still have because it was in such good quality, but you get clothes to walk in the opening ceremony and you get trainers and spikes. If you could go back in time, what advice would you give to young Mary Peters? Oh wow, that's a hard question. Um, probably have more faith in my own ability before I did because I never really believed too much in myself in the early days. And um, I can't tell her to enjoy it because I always did. But that's what I would say to any young person starting out in sport. Enjoy it and enjoy all the fruits that it brings you. Just follow your dream. You should always have a dream that you want to achieve. I've still got things I want to achieve. You always have to have something to look forward to in the future. We really enjoyed having Lady Mary Peters visit our school today. We found out lots more interesting facts about her. And we got to show Mary P as she asked us to call her the display of all our work. That was great with Lady Mary Peters today. Yes, she's amazing. I can't believe that tracksuit still fits her after 50 years. Oops, the mic's still on. Shh. Lady Mary Peters, our very own golden girl.